Just looked on the Fujifilm website and the specification of the X-H2S has come through. So I thought I'd just take a look at the camera, compare it to the X-H1. Um, at the same time, just looking at the Fuji range, I mean, I, I own the X-T1. It's amazing what they've done, the number of cameras in there. Um, I haven't been back to the Fujifilm range. I still own a, um, a compact camera, but I haven't really been back to it. And I always thought, I would by now, to be honest. I thought I would have switched to the X system. But anyway, let's take a look. The X-H1 I looked at to buy very recently. I found the macular X-H1. Um, didn't buy it, regret it, to be honest with you. But then suddenly the X-H2's come out, the S. So let's just take a look and see what they've got. So the size of the camera, is thicker. Um, I've looked at a lot of videos as well looking on this website. So they've changed a few things. They've changed the top plate as well so you haven't got um, shutter speed, dial, an ISO dial. That sort of, you know, is a shame in a way because a lot of people will like that. But I think what they've done with this camera, they're pushing more towards the market. Someone who'd have a 5D Mark IV or obviously the R5 you know, that sort of market, I appreciate that they're in a different league as far as money. I think you're looking at £2,500 um, for this. So £2,500, you can get an R6. So because I've used the R6 recently, well, let's compare it to the R6 as we go along. Let's have a look. So what they've done with it, they're doing 40 frames a second blackout. So, blackout free, sorry, not blackout. Um, so the 40 frames a second, you know, I jest about this quite a lot and it's only because I don't actually do sports photography and I don't do um, birds and this sort of thing. So I should think that's amazing if you're doing that. Um, but if you can't get it with 40 frames a second, I, I don't know how you're gonna get it. So you've got everything you need there. Um, there's this 1000 frames at 30 frames a second so you know technology has reached the point now where we're literally videoing things so this is really the equivalent of pulling stills from video so 26.6 megapixel we'll go into the spec but 26.6 megapixel sensor that sweet spot again um, which food you know about they've got the smaller sensor 1.5 crop but you know where where technology is now um, it's not something you really have to worry about whether you're full frame or whether you're crop sense. So I think that argument's gone now. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, Fuji did the right thing. They settled on one sensor size and they've just kept with it. And they're not going to, I appreciate they've got the medium format end, um, but they're sticking with it. And, you know, I think that's a good thing. Their whole lens range is built around that sensor now. So that's really good. Improved autofocus, I can't say whether it's any good. I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll link in the description to some more videos if I can, where they're gonna describe everything. And video, I'm not gonna go throughout every video spec because I'm not qualified um, to tell you a lot about video. Um, but I will talk about stills and the camera. So the subject detection autofocus is now going for birds, animals, etc. So that's, that's good. I mean, you know, it's in, interesting to see how, you know, like the R7 and these different cameras coming through, they're, they're targeting, they're marketing to a very particular niche, which is basically nature photography and sports. Um, and I think that's interesting because I do photography workshops. I teach a lot of different people, come on them with all sorts of cameras. And I can tell you for a fact, most of the people I get are interested in sports photography and birds. So, you know, they, they know that's a massive market for them um, with these cameras because people want to go out with their camera and they want to come back with the results. And if you've got 40 frames a second and incredible autofocus and sub subject tracking, um, you, that's what you're going to worry about and you're going to, that's what's going to get you the results. So I think they, they know what they're going after the companies at the minute. Um, and the other end of it is obviously 
with 4K video strokes, 6.2K. So, you know, they're downsizing that to 4K. So this file's gonna be incredible. Um, increased recording time, Apple Pro Res. So Fujifilm are putting everything into this camera to make an amazing video camera. And, you know, as I say, go and have a look at some of the reviews on that, but we're not gonna really go into video. So the bits that interest me, we'll move on to now. You, you know that I'm obsessed with stabilization, but we're looking like we've got seven stops. We'll read the small print. That's 35 mil 1.4 R. Um, so bear that in mind, that's a wide angle lens. Whether that's, you know, we don't know where how they're measuring all this, but seven stops in body image stabilization opens up all their prime lenses um, I mean, they're not being silly again. I have to reflect back to what Canon are doing with the R10, taking image stabilization out of the body. What's the point? Um, it's gonna sell you more cameras. It's, it's sort of like holding things back that they've already got, you know, so it's, it's a bit silly really. So they're putting seven stop image stabilization in there. Um, brilliant. So now you've got all your primes. That's gonna open it. You know, that's creativity for people to give you an idea, you know, just for an idea for you. You could stand in the street, shoot at half a second, one second, without a tripod, street photography, create motion blur. So it ticks a big box. So I don't look at these as gimmicks. I look at these as very practical things that allow you to come back with images. Um, so that's really good. Now this is the other great thing, 5.76 million dot EVF. This is gonna be a good EVF. Now the X-H1 was an EVF. Um, it's not one, the reason I didn't buy it again was the EVF. So they've got to push on with these and they've got to bring the best forward. I believe this is gonna be a good EVF now. This is their really their top camera. So um, 5.6 million dot, we'll have a look at that in a bit. Weather resistant body, brilliant. I don't know what advanced operation and controls are, but we'll have a look. This is the interesting bit. So now they're on their new sensor, um, fifth generation. So you've got the best you can get in here, 26.1 stacked, backside illuminated. Now, as much as I love technology, and we could go on forever about this, um, this is basically the best sensor they can produce at the moment. And you'll find what I see from Canon and Nikon, what we've got to imagine is, imagine that none of them exist and there's just a manufacturer of this chip um, and it's in a factory, that's what I do. And, and so you'll, you'll mirror across the different brands, Canon, Nikon, everybody, they seem to come out with the same sort of thing and Sony. Um, and technology isn't really jump, no one's really jumping, they're just sort of, you know, coming up together. But it's great to see that, you know, that Fujifilm are putting their best in there. So they've come on a lot. Um, we don't know what the files look like. I have actually seen some portraits. <laughs> I say that, I've seen a portrait with this sensor and it looks really good. Um, the subtleties and um, that Fujifilm look, the reality of the image. Um, so yeah, I'm really quite interested in borrowing one of these cameras. Fujifilm are pretty good for lending their cameras out like Canon are. Um, so I'll see if I can get hold of one. We'll take a look, try and do, maybe do a wedding with one, with the 5D4. So yeah, it's the X processor. It's gonna be good. Let's have a look at this. This is an interesting format that is, you know, from the iPhone, we can see the HEIF or HEIF or HIF. Um, this is looking to replace JPEG. Whether it will, I don't know. Um, but it's good to see they're involved with that because they're taking really seriously, I think, as they always do, the image coming out of the cameras and JPEG, which is what I love about Fujifilm cameras. I've got my small um, Fujifilm camera and the file straight out of it. You don't need to bother with RAW. And to be honest with you, when I used the X-T1, the JPEGs were so good. 5D Mark IV, We'll see, but you know, this is what this is what a Fuji film have got their real bonus is they're thinking about the file straight out of the camera. So yeah, it's good to see they're involved with that. ProRes, you know, this is the top end stuff, and the CF 
Express expensive Type B card, just accept you've got to spend a fortune on cards. But they've got an SD in there as well. So, you know, from, an, from a wedding point of view, two cards were absolutely sorted with this camera. Brilliant. Um, so they're doing something with power consumption by the look of it. I've heard you're getting 600 shots off the battery and the battery is the same battery as the X-T4. So um, they've got a good battery there. I've talked to other people about that battery. So, um, you know, you've got a battery grip with two, I believe, with this camera. It doesn't show it. It's not, I have to say, food from it's not an amazing page. You should put more on it. But the, the battery grip's got two you can put in, and I believe you can put one in the body at the same time, like the X-H1, which is a brilliant design, because you can use a single, simple body, and then say you want to suddenly put your battery grip on, put that straight on, you can use that for vertical shots. So I really like that idea. Um, I believe that's what they've done. So hopefully, like the X-H1, they've got that design. 40 frames per second, you know, I, I, you know, that's all you're going to ever need, isn't it? So let's just have a little look down here and have a look what they're doing. So we, we just accept the autofocus is going to be amazing by the time they get their firmware sorted. Um, you know, Fujifilm are great for bringing out their firmware and updating their cameras. So they're, they're going to nail that. Um, I, I've got a lot of confidence in that. Now the subject tracking, I'll play this little video while I'm talking. I don't know if it will be on the sound. Let's turn the sound off. Um, this is my only little thing. I personally, looking through a viewfinder, don't want to see a load of green boxes over the subject constantly. I appreciate if you're going to go and do that particular shoot and you're going to, you know, go and do that. But if you're doing a wedding for a day, you might be there for eight hours and you've got this flashing on all the time. Um, it's going to be eye strain and highly annoying to be honest so I do hope that the companies realize that and they're gonna I think they should be doing acquisition so when your autofocus acquires that dog's face it disappears um, just go I mean it, it's either going to keep up with it or it's not from then on so as soon as it's on great we found the face let all the focus points disappear We've got to trust the autofocus anyway from that point on because you're taking a picture of a dog flying through the air over some snow. So I don't personally want to see it every time all over the faces and, you know, just ruins your whole experience of why you're doing photography, in my opinion. But maybe I'm just an old grumpy wedding photographer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to see they're doing that. And obviously, the technology and as far as sports and, you know, perfect it's just that i do something that's a bit slower so probably not as important for me and they they are saying about the heif the hef the hyf um 30 percent smaller um so yeah they're interested in it and you've got your 10 bit which is a better file so you're getting a better jpeg basically um a lot about the video here 6.2k and then you've got your 4k there have a good read, 422, 10-bit. This file is going to be amazing. They're putting, um, you've got 4K at 120p. It's incredible where it's, it's you know, the, the jump in this video area over the past five years is quite incredible, isn't it? So, you know, you get 120 frames a second, 4K. You know, you're getting a top-of-the-range slow-motion camera now. Um, which is great to see, you know, for videographers, this is going to be a great camera. Um, 240 minutes of continuous recording. So there you go. None of this 30 minutes and then it just falls to pieces and you've got to start again and edit it. So, you know, when people are doing concerts, this is great to see, you know. And they put this little fan, it looks a bit clunky. Uh, <laughs> and... Fujifilm are a bit clunky and you have to get used to that. You use their cameras, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, but you can put that, you pull the screen forward, you put your little fan on um, and then you can cool your camera down, which is, you know, obviously required. Won't go too much into it except for F-Log. So there's F-Log 1 or just F-Log, I think it was. And now they've increased the dynamic range. Um, 
which is what all videographers need because obviously they're basically pulling a JPEG. So they're working with a JPEG, they need that amazing dynamic range and then they grade it afterwards. So um, it's a hell of a camera for videographers and it's got raw output, HDMI. Goodness me, I was doing stills, now I've moved on into, uh, here we go, let's have a look, moved on into video. So this is the bit that interests me. Can I keep the camera still? Yes, I can for a certain period of time. And then I run into a church that's freezing cold after being boiling hot and I might be shaking a bit. So that's the reality of doing the job. So well done, Fujifilm. Um, you know, Canon R6 has got stabilization in there. But it's good to see that you're going to try and get this seven stops. You're not combining it with optical. It'd be interesting to see what you are doing with optical and in the camera. There obviously is going to be something, but um, yeah, that's really good to see. 5.76 million dot high resolution electronic viewfinder. See, I'm not going crazy about it because we know there's a nine million dot, but at least it's not a 2.3. Um, these are available we know they're available just put them in the cameras canon please um <laughs> so that's that's the bottom line the viewfinder is photography at the end of the day that's the thing we stare through um that's what we're looking at i i personally would get rid of most of this out of the price of the camera and put the best viewfinder available to man and whatever it is at that stage and I think this is going to be a good one. Um, you can see I'm passionate about viewfinders, but uh, it does. it's the one thing that does annoy me about these uh, mirrorless cameras, the Canon RP. I mean, it's awful. It's just like, God. Anyway, weather seal, brilliant, and a top display. So looking down and being able to see shutter speed, aperture ISO to me, I'm glad they put that in. I can see the line of ISO, then white balance. White balance is you know a strange one to put there i have to say i mean are we really constantly changing white balance now um auto white balance is amazing at these cameras we use raw files so a bit of an unusual one but nice big iso button um i've developed a technique with the 5d mark IV where i don't need to press an iso button now um, which is something i'm going to show you in the future but having a nice big iso button every camera should have that you need to be shooting shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. As you know, with a lot of the lenses with Fujifilm, you've got the aperture ring. So, you know, very nice little setup. Just move it. This is something that you'll either love or hate. And um, if you're going to invest in this camera, A, try and get borrow one first. Um, but go and have a look, that, look at the X-H1 if you can just look at one because it's important to look at it. The feather touch shutter release. I don't know what this is going to be like compared to the X-H1. I absolutely love it. Go and have a look. Um, you're just on the edge of the shutter where it is just requires no effort at all. But then again, you might hate it because it might be too light for you. So I think that's an important consideration for photographers. Um, I would definitely have a look at this camera before you order it online. Um, big tip there, but I really like the shutter release. And if it's the, the X-H1s, the, the sound of the shutter is so quiet, it's incredible. Um, so even if you, you've got electronic shutter, by the way, I mean, they all have, I don't really mention that much now, but the new cameras, but the actual mechanical shutter, on the XH1 is brilliant. I believe it's going to be good on this one as well. Just onto CF Express, just mention it. Um, they're expensive cards, aren't they? Two SD cards in there. It obviously wouldn't do what it needed needs to be done with video. Obviously, it's trying to push through a load of data. Um, it wants to clear the buffer. Um, I've got no real problem with spending money on any of the equipment. Um, as long as it pays me back with my business. So, you know, that's the bottom line. It's not the end of the world for me, but just something to look at is, you know, I'd go and have a look at people that are using the camera first and what brand they're using and what they're having success with. Cause um, I've seen some initial reports that some of the B cards aren't great. So 
Um, just as a little side note there. Right, so you've got the battery grip mentioned there. I think that's the battery grip. We've got USB. I believe you can um, you can charge it when you've got the battery grip on, I believe, and you charge all three batteries, which if that's the case, which I believe it is, brilliant Fujifilm. So I can literally plug that camera in, charge in my batteries. I think every camera should have USB charging on the body. Let's just run through the spec now, because that's what you're here for. So it's the X mount, it's the, it's the new sensor, APS-C, 26.16, very nice sweet spot. Um, I use the 30 megapixel or the 20 mix, megapixel cameras. I'll be quite honest with you, you, you can't really tell much difference between them. So hitting it in the middle, um, ideal. It's got the sensor cleaning, there's your new processor, there's your SD card and it's also got the B card, CF Express. Um, so there you go, there's your 10 bit. Watch this format is my advice. I've seen what happens with formats over the past 20 years. Um, and I saw, what, you can see what Apple have done with this format, um, just by their files, the incredible files out of my um, SE 2020 phone with the 28 mil, Equivalent, amazing camera. I've never reviewed on this channel. I have to bring it a shit. The files out of that camera are incredible. Um, so yeah, just watch out for that. The 14-bit RAWs, plenty of data. TIFFs, not really that interesting TIFFs these days. Um, yeah, you've got a nice square. I always look for the square because obviously you've got the dimension, the vertical dimension of 4160. Um, and you can see that you're getting a nice square out of that as well. A nice high resolution file. Um, so that's really good. And you've got a panoramic, panoramic mode as well. Let's just scroll down a bit. We've got an ISO 80 there. So we haven't got an ISO 50. Um, 25,600. I would imagine um, that we're going to get a camera that's going to be good at 12,800. Um, we'll have to see. Um, but, you know, I expect you're going to get a decent file at 12,800. Let's just carry on going. Um, what can I pick out? It's good to see plus and minus 5 EV. Not something I'm into because I don't sh I shoot manual. So, but if you, you know, you're out in the snow and you just really want to do exposure compensation in AV, aperture priority um, or shutter priority. And it's good to see plus or minus five EV. That's five steps, five stops either side of your exposure. Um, shame they haven't done that with the movie log. Just noticed that if anyone's into their videography, a um, bit strange, um, but you might have a, it is a bit strange, I think, just going plus minus two, but anyway. There's your seven stops. It's, I always like this little bit. Let's read the little stars. So we've got CPA, pitch your shake only. <laughs> um, anyway, um, and they, they reference the 35mm 1.4, which obviously, really, I know it's their standard lens, um, but it's a slightly wide lens. So, yeah, I don't know what they're really trying to say there. Again, comment below if you do. Um, Got digital image stabilization, movie mode. That's good. Focal plane shutter, very quiet. Uh, well, it will. I haven't heard it, but I just, I just, I just know it will be. It's, uh, they're not going to make the XH1 shutter um, more noisy. So, yeah, we've got everything in there. We won't go through all of that. We'll pick out electronic shutter. Four seconds in electronic shutter. That's good to see. Um, Let's move on down a bit. Goodness me, I've got some specs here. That's interesting. So you've got some bracketing options. That's really good. Um, film simulation bracketing. I mean, it's a strange little one that, um, but that's actually quite useful. If you're learning photography as well, then you could use a Turner and you could, you know, you could use black and white, so film simulation, that's quite nice. 
and dynamic range bracketing is quite interesting if you're producing the if you, you know if, you, if you're going with the jpeg workflow and being able to do dynamic range 100 percent 200 percent that's just altering the amount of well dynamic range effect is the best way to describe it but i know it because i've used the fujis so there's a sweet spot 400 might look wrong to you but 200 might look right so being able to bracket them is actually good and you've got ISO, and this is a brilliant thing actually, I use this on my Fuji where you've got the bracketing ISO sensitivity which is really useful, it means you can put your shutter speed and aperture fixed um, based on what exactly what you need and then you just bracket your ISO exposures, bang 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 and pick the best one, so I've used that a lot on my uh, little Fuji, love it. White balance bracketing, if you're in a JPEG workflow um, interesting see what you can do with that focus bracketing hdr mode that's what i was getting to so yeah having a good hdr mode i mean if i was to tell you one thing that separates everything out from a phone through to these cameras um is hdr basically the bottom line is the manufacturers need to focus on hdr single image hdr stacking up the images, do exactly what Apple are doing and the other camera um, phone manufacturers, but I'll reference Apple because that's what I use. Um, dynamic range is the problem, um, but trying to pull everything out of one file and giving us a raw file where we're trying to pull all the detail out of one file. Um, there must be some reason why, why the camera companies obviously can't use their technology. And that's why Apple are miles ahead on this. Um, and it is the key. I mean, when I go back to my phone and I do landscape photography with one single click, it's stacking the images up, bringing the file out, finished. Um, that's what we want. So I'd love to have a go and see where HDR, where I don't actually know where HDR has got to really with these really modern cameras the past 12 months. Um, but that will be interesting to see how far they have come. So it's good to see toy camera and everything else. Um, if you want to play around with that, it's fine. Du, du, du. Focus, um, low light, there we go. Minus four EV <laughs> based on the 15 mil one F1 attached. <laughs> I love specs, they're great. That basically means in that lets a hell of a lot of lights, an F1 lens. Well, we don't own that. We all own different lenses, obviously. Um, I use F4 lenses, so that's you know 1.2 that's interesting we don't really know until you actually point at them at a black cat and a black seller you're never really going to know um minus four ev um minus seven phase detection um so you know have to wait and see we'll soon know because people will make a lot of videos saying it's either amazing or not very good the r6 is actually brilliant in low light i took it into the darkest place took a picture of a grandfather clock i couldn't even see the thing still focused on it um and it, there was no light at all so yeah that's interesting see how good it is when we have a go with it just trying to pick some interesting things out for you There we go, so we've got the OLED color viewfinder, 5.76, so 100% coverage. Um, 24 months, from a rear end, this is a big thing for me, so I have to look at this because of glasses, and one thing I find with a lot of these, the R6 is just awful, to be honest. Um, one thing it has got is you can um, adjust it, so you make the, little screen appears smaller in the viewfinder, which is what I had to do with, with, with glasses on. You're in real trouble with a lot of these cameras. So again, I don't know till I see it, but it all looks interesting. Um, and we'll see whether that's any good when we look through it. Won't go all into the movie side. Normal white balance range. There's a lot in there, um, and it's got a mic input, it's got um, headphone jack. So yeah, as an all-round camera, this is this has got so much in this camera. 
Um, it shocked me to be honest. I haven't read through that obviously before I've spoken about it. Ergonomics of the camera look good. I've looked at what people are looking at. The battery grip looks good. This could be the camera of the year. I'll be quite honest with you. Um, you might be looking at something here that is, is going to be, well, Fuji are doing well, Fujifilm are doing well, um, but this could be a camera that just switches so many people over from Canon um, and Nikon as well. So you, you, you could really see a, a change this year where videographers and photographers really take Fujifilm on. Um, maybe I'll be one of them. I'll, I'll get hold of it, we'll take a look and um, we'll take it to a wedding, see how we get on. We'll leave it at that for today. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Um, I'm having a push on videos this year. Give it a thumbs up if you like this sort of thing. The only reason I, the only way I find out whether you like these videos is give them a thumbs up. So thanks for that. Um, I'll see you again soon.